Hello, hello, and welcome to our first ever episode of the Conquistador Conversation, uh, in which we talk with fellow fellow members of our college athletics, uh, people from inside our department, uh, other athletic directors around the country, national office staff, coaches, and most importantly, student athletes. So we'll cover those in the next few weeks. I'm your host for today's episode. Uh, my name is Nathan Wehrmeyer, uh, and I work closely with our co-host, in the athletic department at Dodge City Community College. The one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Jacob Ripple. Jake, say hi. Hey, how are you guys doing today? So, uh, our first guest uh, on the conversation is the NJCAA president and CEO, Dr. Christopher Parker. Dr. Parker has been leading the NJCAA for the past Dr. Parker, how long have you been there? About to finish year number three. Finishing year number three. Uh, he got started within the association as a baseball coach and administrator. I remember you telling me this story uh, when we talked on the phone last year. You started the uh, first ever athletic department in the Virginia Commonwealth at Patrick Henry Community College. Uh, and that's a, a fun fact a lot, a lot of people don't know. Um, so... We're just going to kind of jump into it a little bit, Dr. Parker. Uh, so tell us a little bit about you and your family and how you and your wife and daughter are kind of getting through this time of being quarantined. Well, let me let me echo the fact that uh, Jake Ripple is the man. You, you <laughs> spoke right about that. Jake Ripple is the man. No, uh, no, questions, uh, no questions about it. Um, so yeah, we, uh, just like everybody, just zoom 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 and it's not a mazda commercial it's a it's, <laughs> this, it's this online application but uh you know i've gosh i've probably watched more tv non-sports related tv over these last six weeks um put in a garden redid a lot of outdoor work around the house uh flowers mulching hedging the bushes um got a lot of projects done that probably been needed to be done for about uh the last three years but uh really T tackled those and got them done. Um, you know, it's, I've spent more time with my wife and daughter the last six weeks. I probably have in six years. And, uh, you know, that, that time is something that we can't, uh, you know, we can't give back and, and can't deny, but really just, you know, trying to focus on the student athletes across the country and supporting our members and our colleges and our ADs and administrators to keep them informed because the, in the instability, the fluid situation changes every day. And, that's the most nerve wracking part of the whole situation, but it also takes, uh, you know, takes me and, and my team to stand at the top and really just focus on keeping the cool collective calm, you know, ideas in place and, and, and kind of hold tight so we can get through this together. Yeah. It, uh, with everything changing so fast, I can remember vividly Jake and I sitting at uh, the softball game against, uh, was it Butler? Yep. And we were sitting there with our HR director and it was that Thursday after you had postponed the national tournament and things were just coming left and right and, and like stuff from the conference was coming. You can't shake hands after the game and, and we didn't get to our softball coach in time to tell him don't shake hands after the game and here they are coming across the line shaking hands and I'm like, well, there's the first thing we missed. Um, so it, it, it was a, weird time and things are changing so much and I can say from my perspective and I know Jake agrees with me that we're really pleased and, and, and honored to be a part of the NJCAA and have you guys leading us through this because I think it's this association has really shown what great leadership it has through this situation and, and you know we just want to thank you for all the stuff that you've been doing and your office has been doing. And I know it's tough working remotely, uh, but you guys are handling it pretty great. And I appreciate that very much. Yeah. The, uh, the, everybody across the country has been great. I mean, it's just it, the NJC forward campaign, the getting everybody together and understanding the patience. And you know, what I, what I really have appreciated is everybody's kind of calmness and their patience, but the respectability factor where, Typically, we take we take uh, ourselves as former athletes, coaches, administrators, whatever. And we're all riled up, 
for, for the most part across the country, everybody's been patient with everybody. Everybody's been kind. And, and that kindness, you know, hopefully as we, as we grow out of this pandemic, that kindness carries forward because we are all in this together. And like I said, my team has been phenomenal to work with. Um, it's just, it's difficult when you, like I said, when you sit here and you have to, to zoom and be on a phone all day long and you just miss that, miss that face-to-face engagement, even if it's just a chuckle or a laugh for a little while that breaks the, breaks the period of intensity or breaks the period of, of what you're doing. Like I said, that, that experience is so different. So my, uh, my humor in, in, in most of these is I've been on so many of these and, and I have a dog that's my wife and I that's we've been married going on 14 years and the dog is the same age. And then we have a brand new puppy that's a year old. And my office here is in the front of the house where I keep the windows open. And it doesn't matter who walks by this house. Those dogs interrupt every call. And so mm-hmm. you yep. hear that in a little while. It's just the norm for me these days is, is these two dogs want to get out. And I did see a meme uh, as well. And it showed, uh, it showed a dog standing at the door. And it says, now I understand as a human why every time that door opens, I want to run out of it. <laughs> yeah. We're just, we're trying to charge every person that, you know, I don't know how many times I've said hi to the, to the mailman or the UPS driver in the last couple, couple weeks, just trying to get some interaction. This is a, this is an extrovert's nightmare and an introvert's dream right now. So Um, that's a, you know, that's a for sure. And and I think that, uh, you know, you're hitting on some things and missing that face to face. I know for me, uh, you know, we were supposed to be national convention just a couple of weeks ago. And, and that's an event that I look forward to, you know, it's a chance to, to be around uh, leaders from across the nation, be around our national office staff and interact. And while we do a lot of business while we're there, um, you know, there's a lot of interaction there that's, that's just enjoying being around each other as well. So that's obviously a, a piece that I've definitely missed this year. And, and I think that, I think that a lot of administrators and, and coaches and uh, across the nation, including national office staff would echo that, that sentiment when I say that. But uh, with that being said, obviously we've got, uh, we're going to have national uh, kind of, virtual national meetings next week, which I think is going to be interesting. Uh, obviously, I'm preparing for uh, the football uh, committee meeting. and, and uh, But you guys have been doing, uh, obviously, a lot more than just what we're looking at with virtual national meetings. I know, um, you know, I know you personally have been meeting with uh, personnel from the NCAA and the NAI on eligibility stuff. And then, uh, you know, I – I mean, I don't know how many times, how many times are you doing that? And, and, and what's been the, I guess the, the good and the bad that's come from that. And then how many times is our own eligibility committee meeting during this time? Yeah. So the, um, when, when all of this kind of struck last year, um, you know, uh, Jim Carr, the president CEO of the NAIA, we, we've had a great relationship, um, opened the door with the NCAA with some of their leaders, Mark Emerson and others. And, uh, all this kind of struck, I just kind of put a note out and said, Hey guys, I think the, I think the three of us probably need to get together and just talk. And Dr. Emmert's office got back right away. Jim Carr's office got back right away and said, yes, let's get together. And uh, that kind of started the conversations to really understand where everybody was and to help us collectively navigate through things for eligibility purposes, you know, very intently and, and succinctly. And that's been a, been a huge success. And I have communicated with them, nearly every other day, if not daily, for the last couple of weeks with uh, two VPs from the NCAA, uh, the VP and uh, president from the NAA, and really just keeping us in line with, with what needs to happen. The, the elephant in the room is fall sports, and none of us want to answer that question. <laughs> and we can't answer that question. But, you know, right now – Schools are already talking about closing for the fall and doing remote online for the fall. So, you know, the kind of the the headline for your story is, I mean, we're looking at that in, in, in the month of May. We'll start developing some plans of what does that look like with, you know, I keep telling everybody my crystal ball must have got smashed somewhere during baseball <laughs> the first few weeks because I can't, I can't, get, I can't read it anymore. Um, but, you know, Fall sport. I mean, what 
what do we do? I mean, it's it's it, it's it's chaos to think football won't take place, or if it starts late, what does it look like? And man, I mean, I feel sorry for you, Jake, as a football chair, because you know it's it's tough, but it's reality. And uh, the only positive that I continue to tell people is this situation is making us all better. It's making us better communicators. It's making us better administrators. It, you know, we have to continue to focus on the 30,000 uh, feet perspective of what this organization can do for each other at all given times and really adjust accordingly. And, you know, that that's the one good thing that I keep reminding people about as we all go through this period of unknown and uncertainty and fear and anxiety and, and everything else, because everybody's level of anxiety is different, whether you know, you're just kind of living day to day or whether you're scared about tomorrow. I mean, it's just so different for everybody. And um, for, our, for us as administrators, making sure our student athletes have that comfort and that care from both their academic and their athletic side of what their future holds. I mean, we've got a lot riding on our shoulders, which I tell everybody all the time, two-year college athletics is the hardest business in the athletics world. You have to recruit somebody for two years, change their life, and then, then get them somewhere else. Everybody else gets them four years or – you get them four years in high school, but at the two-year college, it's the most unique situation, and it's the hardest job. And that's why, you know, no, I don't care who asks me, you know, ADs and coaches at our level are, are godsend. They, they are truly special people. So, uh, let's see. So, Dr. Parker, are there any NJCAA business partners um, that are kind of repurposing themselves, kind of changing what they're making or doing to kind of help in the aid of this pandemic that you know of? I know there are, I know there are schools who, uh, whose nursing programs and many of their applied sciences are, are stepping up and they're, they're helping their community. And that's, that's the thing about community colleges. I mean, we have the word community in our names and really focus on that community experience and that community support because at the end, we want those community people to come back out and support us when we're on the field or we need help in the classroom, whatever it may be. So seeing those schools that are giving back and being engaging, that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, that's people helping people. And that's what makes it so special and so unique. As far as some of our big national partners, there's a variety of things. We've got our, our health liaisons who are providing us with information all the time. Uh, some of our other partners, we see them kind of pitching in to, make sure that stability is there from whether it's a business perspective or whatever it may be, you know, very proud of many of our sponsors who have, who have stepped in and said, you know, we understand what you're going through and we just want to make sure you guys are successful just like us. So that that's been a, that's been a blessing to all of us. That's been, to me, that's been one of the interesting things to look at is how businesses are responding to some of this. And, and uh, I know here in Dodge City, you know, we have a, uh, we're lucky and, and uh, have a company that's, that's, uh, they, a distillery here in Dodge City, and they've completely repurposed what they're doing and, and they're mass producing uh, hand, hand cleaner, hand sanitizer. And it's, it's been really cool to see. So that, to me, that's one of the things that's, uh, that's been really interesting to see see how businesses have um, adapted and changed and and obviously you know we have some great partners uh, across the nation as the NJCA as well as locally and so it's really fun to see how how they're taking things on and and how some of our people are taking things on that's been that's been really interesting for me to see and I think you hit on it it's, it's this whole thing is making us all better. I mean, in, in the end, it's, it's, it's making us all better. So um, one of the things I wanted to hit on, and it's unfortunate it actually got canceled, but uh, our foundation awards, the NJCA foundation awards, I think that's a, uh, it's one of those things that's out there that, that not a people, not a lot of people have been uh, introduced to. And I think it's a, I personally think it's a great thing. And so uh, obviously disappointment that we had to delay it, but at the same time, I want you to talk about that a little yeah, so that was um, that was one of my visions from the from the start was to create this NJCA foundation and through a foundation already being a five hundred one c three organization, you know we we accept sponsorship dollars from that, but but when we made the move to Charlotte, um, the key was to find a group of people that would invest in the NJCAA that had ties from the from the big corporate world. You know when we looked at when we look at businesses, where you know with Charlotte being the 
one of the biggest banking communities in, in the country, in the world, actually. You know, where do we where do we put all those pieces together? Where do we find avenues to support our student athletes, our colleges, all those things? So when we put all this together, you know, we really looked at what else needs to be done. And you know, one of my things was I want to honor those people over the last 80 years who have made this organization what it is today that have given us, you know, this beacon of light to shine and, and, and move forward and uh, put together kind of the, the hall of fame idea. And uh, with that, we went back to the foundation board and said, Hey, can you guys support this? Absolutely. So the, the financial piece all works together with the foundation board for honoring the student athletes of the year, the hall of fame people, all those people collectively. And it's a fundraising event all at the same time. Sean Marion was going to be our speaker this year. Um, you know, so it's just, it's just a time for, for supporting the history of this organization, honoring those that have been so, you know, so monumental and supportive in, in what we do and, and how and why we do it, but telling that story over and over and over again. And that's one of my focuses since taking over is telling our story. The only way we make ourselves known is to tell our story over and over and over again. And this is the one time where I tell our people, we have two ears and one mouth for a reason, but we're going to ask everybody else to use their two ears and we're going to use our one mouth very loudly to tell the story of the NJCAA from the student athletes, to the coaches, to the administrators. When I uh, go around the country and I'm having lots of conversations with people, they have no idea that Roger Clemens, Andy Pettit, Jorge Vizlina, um, Bubba Watson, Cam Newton, Tyreek Hill, they have no idea that these people got a chance at the NJCAA, whether it was their first chance, second chance, whatever it may be, but for the NJCAA, they weren't a part of their career. And again, when we look at doctors, lawyers, great business people, how many of them got their start at a two-year college? And it's all about those resources and the opportunities and having people tell that story, but having pride that, you know, they're a Dodge City Community College graduate first before they went to the University of, of Kansas or Iowa or North Dakota, wherever it may be, you know, they want that pride. And we want to instill that all across the country for all of our 500 plus colleges. Absolutely. That's a, it's a, it's such a great story. So I, I think that's one of the, I, I think it's one of the things that, that I'm hoping will really take off for the NJCA. And I know you feel the same way about that. Absolutely. I'm going to, I'm going to flip the script here on you guys for a minute and, how, how are you guys coping with it? I mean, you know, how, how are you guys adjusting and how are you guys coping with being away from your student athletes? I mean, I've, I've been three years now where I haven't been sitting on the seat with kids. I mean, when I, my last job, I was a VP of the university and I saw every student come through the doors from graduate to undergraduate and I had to engage them, but I don't have that engagement now in this job. But how are you guys coping with, with that, you know, connectivity? It, it's been tough, and and I think that part of it is is just what we talked about earlier is that that uncertainty of of you know what's going to happen, how are, how are things going to change moving forward. But um, you know, I got to give our coaching staff a, a, a big round of applause on what they've done. Um, you know, our our football staff jumped on it immediately, and and I think pretty much all of our other coaches have followed and um, our football staff, they do uh, Sunday, and Monday, they do uh, academic meetings with, uh, with their, with each position, each position coach does academic meetings with their kids. Um, and then on, on Wednesdays, they do position meetings and actually do some of the, uh, you know, some of the install as much as they can do the install over film and, and things like that. And then uh, every Friday, uh, they have a team meeting as a whole and, and they're all doing that through Zoom. And, and uh, you know, they kind of, they jumped on that immediately as, uh, as, as the student athletes left school and, and were gone. They jumped on that immediately and, and they've been really good about that. And, uh, you know, but it's, it, it's still tough. You know, we're, we're still, we've got, uh, you know, while we've sent most people home, we still have nine, uh, nine people living in our dorms and those nine are all student athletes and, uh, they're, they're there for different reasons. Uh, some of them, uh, really don't want to go home because the, the area that they live in is a very, is a real hot spot. And, uh, some of the, 
A um, couple of them are international kids that, that couldn't get home for a while, and now they're looking at that. And um, So there's a lot of different reasons, but, uh, you know, it, it's tough, and, and that's one of the things that I've, I've been – I've stressed to our coaches from the start is, you know, make sure that uh, – Make sure that you're that you're staying in touch with your student athletes, and you know we as a staff we're meeting with uh, we're meeting with uh, our entire staff every other week, and then our head coaches on the weeks in between, um, and then we have uh, individual staff meetings as well. So you know we're trying to stay in touch as much as we can, um, but it's it's like you, I don't have much I don't have much interaction with the students now. And, and it drives me nuts. I mean, honestly, that's one of the things I miss the most about coaching is that daily interaction where you're actually, you know, there with the student athletes and, and uh, now they're completely gone. And, and, you know, I don't get to zoom with them very much. And um, I've actually uh, talked to coach about maybe jumping in on a team meeting just to say, guys, you know, some things like that. So, um, you know, we're coping, we're doing some of those things, but, but uh, it's not the same as being in person. So I don't know. Is there anything I missed there, Nathan? No, it's just, it's hard and it's hard for everybody. Um, one of the things that, you know, I do find almost a little comfort in is knowing that this is not like, a, it's not a Dodge City Community College thing. This is a worldwide thing that everybody. everybody's dealing with. So we're all in this together. That almost makes me, and it does make me feel a little bit better, but, you know, looking at our, our calendar right now, I should be sitting at a softball game against Colby right now uh, out of the softball field. So, you know, it's just it, – this is not a new normal for us. This is not going to be normal. So, it's just – this is a new in-between right now. So, you know, things will look different when we come out on the other side. But, you know, part of my Monday motivation stuff, I try to tell people is uh, just – Use this time wisely and find ways to better yourself uh, right now. So, uh, you know, it's like you had said at the beginning, you know, I'm getting to spend a ton of time with my family that I would not have gotten to to have, you know, if we were still, you know, if this didn't happen. So I remind myself of that daily as I get to spend time with my boys and my wife and, you know, every once in a while, you know, I'll be zooming with Jake and, one of them will come running in here shirtless and jumping <laughs> on the bed behind me. So, you know, it's always a treat. And, you know, I am surprised, not surprised, but I am. Okay. Yeah. No, she ain't, she's not running in here. If we won't go there. Uh, but she, she, yeah, she's interrupted a couple of times. She interrupted the other day and asked what I wanted for lunch. And, and Jake's like, Oh, you're cooking. I'll be right over. Uh, so it's, it's just, di it's, it's different. It's, it's weird. Um, but like Jake and I had said the other day that it, it'll come back eventually. We just don't know when. Uh, so we just have to take it one day at a time. So, uh, I know one of the things we wanted to be a little bit lighthearted and, and we talked a little bit about, uh, some of the, uh, uh, some of the memes that, that we all found, entertaining and and uh that was one of the things that i was i was actually looking for uh trying to share my screen right now to to see did you ever find did you ever find one jake yeah i showed you mine oh that's right see another thing that this is doing to me i, I have a terrible memory now that i can't freaking remember things <laughs> um well, i think the uh, first well, jake, one Hang on, I got, I got the. I think this is Nathan's, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Jake has a, Jake has a, He's got a, a teenage daughter that's in college and a wife, and I've a boy that is. He's about to be six and a three-year-old. So this is mine. You know what can go wrong with being with your family for eighteen hours a day every day. <laughs> and then. Uh... Hang on a second. Let me move. I think Dr. Parker, yours is next. I I laughed when I saw yours. I thought that was great. <laughs> yeah, you can Chuck Norris just had a birthday the other day. And how old did they say it was 78? I think what? That, yeah. Man, I was that like, 
I was like, you kidding me? I mean, this, dude's been, this dude's been using that same body flex machine for the last four years, you know? Um, but yeah, when I saw this one, I said, this is great, you know? Oh, his birthday was on March 10th, and he turned 80 years old. 80? Wow. That's cool. Uh, He's got to be a fit man at 80 years old. <laughs> I, th- I love it because I just think it's, it's kind of the uh, – I, I, I kind of think it's our attitude as, as we're like, we're okay, we're going to figure out how to beat this thing. And so yep. that's, that's one of the things. And then uh, I think mine was, uh, there was, that was, mine. <laughs> so, I, I've become so nor so used to, uh, you know, just being around sports. It's just what we do. And, and uh, just everything's gone. And somebody asked me, they're like, what's your favorite uh television show i'm like oh sports center but not now i mean <laughs> nothing new on so that was one of the things so when i saw this i was like yep that's that yeah, i don't think any i think any of us would climb underneath with him right now <laughs> I think that's exactly right so yeah um, speaking of uh speaking of sports and espn is there like a petition i could start on change.org to get espn to bro- broadcast some of our championship games from the past because they're playing stuff like cornhole and esports and celebrity <laughs> <Yeah>. horse <laughs> we uh we've uh talked to cbs sports network um some of that stuff and uh don't know where any of it will land because they've only got two well they got three things they have last year's football the year before's football and then mental and basketball from two years ago um and then uh some of the things that we have done through other platforms aren't quite the quality that's necessary for, for TV. So they only have a limited, uh, limited uh, stockpile of, of stuff that they can use for uh, the quality of TV. But I got to be honest with you, I, I am super excited about Friday of this week with the Michael Jordan. Uh, Sunday it's coming out coming on Sunday out, night. Yeah. Coming out, uh, coming out early. I mean, that, uh, that, that I can tune in and enjoy. We're all, we're all going to be sitting there watching that thing at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So a couple of quick questions before we end. Um, what's one thing you're missing right now because of this quarantine and not talking about sports related, but like a gathering of some type, uh, like a food you're missing, something that you really want to do that you can't do right now. For me, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just being face to face with people. Um, you know, it, it's just that, that unity or that, that, uh, that, that togetherness that, you know, like I said, we took, we take for granted running out to lunch with each other, um, you know, to get a bite to eat. And, and now when I run out to lunch, if I, if I can, it's, it's a drive through only. And, you know, my wife won't let me touch my food till I get home and sanitize it and make sure that it's, you know, you know, completely okay for me to eat and that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's those little things that, that I really miss the most. I mean, I haven't seen my – outside of my wife and, and daughter, I mean, I haven't seen the rest of my family in seven, eight weeks now. My daughter's birthday was three weeks ago, and we celebrated her birthday in, in quarantine. She's 11 years old, so it's really – it's hard to celebrate 11-year-old in, in quarantine. So, like I said, just that, that engagement piece of, of people and, and knowing, like I said, the convention, the convention was supposed to – be going on and you get everybody together and you know you talk about the good bad the indifferent and you you know see where progression goes but uh just not having that is is tough um i can say that i have cooked more in the last six weeks than i than i ever have in my life which is mostly grilling but uh you know i've got to throw it out throw it out there and and grill it up and uh, enjoy a few a uh, few meals at the at the table so are you are you currently binge watching something? Uh, if so, what is it and why? Uh, and if you're not binge watching anything, oh, why why what's wrong with you? Why not? <laughs> so uh, my favorite TV show is The Blacklist hmm. um, with, with James Spader, and uh, it's I think it's on probably season four or five now, and that comes on Friday nights now. So I, I keep up with that. I, I did watch The Tiger King. Um, oh, I'm I'm not was, up to date with those things. I heard about it. What was it? My, my wife's from Oklahoma, so we had to watch it. I mean, that was, that was I, I could last chance on. you on steroids. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I've never seen that either, so I don't. Yeah, I've never, I've never even watched a full episode of Last Chance You, but but what no. what I read and seen, this is Last Chance You on steroids. Um, it I'll is. Avoid it. It's it's a unique show to let, let, let's say the least. Um, criminal Criminal Minds and Law and Order reruns for the last twenty years on. Uh, I don't know what I don't even know what channels they're on. I can tell you it's Dish Network one twenty six and two hundred right. Ion, Ion TV and something else. Um, I've watched I think every episode of, of Law and Order from nineteen eighty eight to to now and Criminal Minds since it started and went off air a few weeks ago. So those are, those are the two shows that I've watched the most of. Well, it's good for you because I'm stuck watching uh, the musical bachelor now. Um, <laughs> the things we, out. yeah, well, I mean, I love my wife, so I'll, you know, I get to spend time with her. That's how I'm, I'm using it. Nick, what are you watching right now? Uh, we, we did, uh, like I said, just like, you know, we did Tiger King, just my wife being from Oklahoma, I, I, I had to, I was like, well, we've got to watch that. And as, as she will claim, it's, that's not her part of Oklahoma. Uh, <laughs> she says, you know, it's a whole different world when you get south of I-40. Um, she's, uh, she's from about 12 miles from the Kansas border. So she's not too far into Oklahoma. And she claims that once you cross I-40 to the South, it's a, it's a whole different Oklahoma. So uh, we've done that. And then, uh, and then just a uh, few other things. Uh, she's, I think she's currently rewatching uh, cheer about the Navarro cheer team and, and uh, some of that going on. Um, but uh, that's kind of, that's kind of where it is. I kind of laughed at Tiger King and, and uh, you'll, Dr. Parker, you'll appreciate this. Uh, the, Rick Kirkham, the guy that did the, the internet uh, reality show with him. If you uh, take a picture of Jeff Carpenter, Indy's radio guy side by side, <laughs> this kind of looks like Carpenter might have aged a little bad and, and turned into this one too. So <laughs> um. I watched the uh, the special that was on Fox. I guess it was Monday night on Tiger King. Yes. And that, that dude Rick, he's the one who wrote Inside Edition. He was the person who created the show Inside Edition that's still syndicated today. And, and you know, it's like, oh, you know, this guy's got a lot of credibility. But uh, they asked him, they asked him, would you ever go back and try to do this again? And he said, absolutely, bleeping, bleep, bleep, bleep. No. <laughs> Uh, well, I, Dr. Parker, thank you so much for jumping on with us. We appreciate it, and uh, we're going to continue to try to, you know, move our our message forward as far as a as an institution and the NJCA as well, and and uh, we'll continue to do that through this time and continue to work with everybody. So I really appreciate you taking the time with us today. Absolutely, thank you guys for having me. Give me a give me a little comic relief while also talking about the the great work that uh, you all in our organization does. I really appreciate you all having me and I uh, look forward to next week's meetings, Jake and uh, Nate, appreciate your, uh, your involvement and in getting this going as well. So you guys have a great day. All right. Thanks a lot. Parker.